Hi right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, where we have, uh, we have somehow stumbled into, what is it today? It is Wednesday, November 10th. November 10th, 2021, and we are in Durham, North Carolina, where it is heading to 78 degrees on this gorgeous day. And the little dog and I need to figure out what we're doing on this beautiful day. In Durham, North Carolina, as we head back to the oasis of freedom, but <coughs> one thing we're doing before we get our day going, it's been a couple of days since our daily dose of doom and gloom, and I want to thank Brother Kevin Shanholzer for sending me this story uh, from a man I've never heard of, interviewing a man I've never heard of, coming out of the... I, you can go get chippies and all that. Coming out of, uh, <coughs> unbelievably enough, <coughs> the Salt Lake City Weekly, I'm assuming. That would be the Salt Lake City uh, Utah Weekly. Glad to see this showing up in the uh, mainstream media. This is from a fellow... <coughs> There's some local environmentalist there named Jim Colano, and uh, his essay, I'm going to put the link, I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit of this. This is a long, involved essay, including interviews with several doomers and whatnot. Uh, we are going to call this, Time is Up. It is the end of the world, and... We know it. Well, a tiny few of us know it. Uh, so what he does in this long article is he introduces what he calls the six levels of total denial, complete, you know, complete clueless moron denial, not wanting to hear one word of this, right on up to the six level of being a doomer, there's probably a seventh level. He is at the sixth level, kind of where I am. And uh, so he is in a hypothetical conversation talking to uh, the people working towards being a doomer. <clears throat> Quote, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, he says, but we have simply gone too far down the hole rapid conversion to a renewably fueled society and carbon capture are technologically and logistically impossible. I need to make this a little bit bigger. <clears throat> All right. For several reasons, even if we were to immediately stop using fossil fuels, which we won't, there is already too much heat trapping greenhouse gas in the atmosphere to stop the rise in global temperatures. A cascade of tipping points, many already in the rear view mirror, will almost certainly make the Earth's climate inhospitable for humans and most mammals. The best long shot case would be if small pockets of habitability can continue to sustain human existence. Close quote. Uh, so anyway, guys, I'm just going to skip ahead. I, I, I'm going to put the link on here. So he starts out with his own essay and then heads into these interviews. Uh, in, you know, he starts out with recent environmental news reports have made the first two schools of thought, you know, just complete, total denial, simply impossible to defend. Uh, even the third 
the idea that we have lots of time left to correct the problem has seen its credibility plummet in light of recent uh, of increasing record setting uh, all of this stuff. Uh, at long last, public opinion is coming in line with what science has been warning us about for years. And I do not know uh, how bad I apologize for the wind noise on the on the uh, microphone, but I am not. I am visiting my doomy friends. They don't want to hear this, so I'm not allowed. I they sent me down here out of earshot. Uh, <clears throat> All right, but as it is increasingly apparent that the way we have lived on this planet has tragically altered its chemistry, biology, and ecology, the question then becomes, how bad will things get? Is it possible that our world could become uninhabitable for humans and most other species? A growing number of scientists and laypersons who choose to be guided by facts and observable trends as opposed to forming their opinions around <laughs> hopes and wishes, say such a scenario is very likely, if not inevitable. <clears throat> the end of the world as we know it has been debated, discussed, and predicted by intellectuals, mystics, and prophets for millennia. What will happen to our planet and its inhabitants has also been considered by science in fiction writing and cinema and at annual and around the campfire discussions since time immemorial. immemorial uh, <clears throat> so you know, they talk about all the ways that all these people for thousands of years have been talking about how the world is going to end. The difference now being science is backing up the predictions. Uh, ca catastrophic abrupt climate change is the new kid on the block. Yes, mainstream science is gradually narrowing in on the final two scenarios, you know, the most pessimistic, otherwise known as uh, the most realistic. Uh, the IPCC released a chilling report in August that is far less hopeful than the previous five assessments published by the IPCC since 1990. That organization uh, has been criti criticized for being overly optimistic. Its latest report, however, contains dire warnings of imminent, catastrophic, and irreversible climate impacts given the quantity of greenhouse gases uh, such as CO2, methane, and others mostly released by industrial activities that are already in the atmosphere and that and oceans and continue to be released relatively unabated. Three terms are useful in discussions about abrupt climate change. The first is overshoot. When a society surpasses in population and consumption the capacity of its environment to sustainably support it. The second term is tipping point, which is when a condition reaches a critical stage and can no longer be stopped. And the third is feedback loop, which is when a condition deepens as a result of itself. One example of this is how Arctic ice shrinks each year, allowing more sunlight to penetrate ocean water instead of reflecting it back into space, which heats the ocean and contributes to 
further ice melt. Now you will notice anybody on this channel, this is just kind of a Doomer 101. You gotta remember where we're talking about. This is the, the a newspaper in Salt Lake City, Utah. So, uh, you know, to a lot of us here, but this, uh, if you're just starting down this rabbit hole, uh, human, humans, began leaving a carbon footprint and every other aspect of an environmental footprint other than carbon about 10,000 years ago at the dawn of agriculture things went into overdrive three centuries ago when society started mining large quantities of carbon that had been deposited over hundreds of millions of years as decaying plant and animal life sank to the bottom of oceans, seas, and swamps, becoming oil, coal, and natural gas. Our ancestors started burning these fossil fuels to power their lives, and carbon dioxide was released as its waste. Since the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, we have spewed more than a half trillion tons of CO2 into the air. By weight, that amount of carbon dioxide would roughly equal to Mount Everest. Uh, then he dives and, you know, he breaks down uh, global warming and CO2 and methane and um, again skipping ahead we have created an entire society and economy based on fossil fuel use and so far our species has shown little resolve to significantly change its ways due in large part to centuries of self-centered thinking and decades of misinformation disseminated by fossil fuel companies and the government officials who back them. Many individuals in industrialized societies simply resist change. I cannot give up my big house, car, RV, boat, motorized toys, vacations, cruises, or even a clothes dryer, the first, wor the first world opines, while at the same time less wealthy societies aspire, aspire to our profligate lifestyle. Our lack of will to abandon biosphere killing ways is why a growing number of experts see humanity as simply too addicted to have ever averted disaster. And don't forget, there is also a world population that has swelled from two and a half billion when I was born in 1950 to nearly eight billion today the global population could reach 10 billion, but some researchers have calculated that even if humans were doing everything right in terms of living simply and using alternative and renewable energy, the planet could support at most about 2 billion of us in perpetuity. Um, I am aware this may be the biggest downer that the City Weekly and uh, Salt Lake City readers have ever encountered in these pages. Many will reject it as inaccurate and overly pessimistic, and that is a perfectly normal human response. Denial is the first of psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's classic five stages of grief and some such as the gentleman uh, tolerating me living in his house uh, for one day. Uh, denial is the first 
of the five stages of Greece, and some never move beyond denial, even when contemplating their own death, let alone that of all of humankind within a relatively short time frame. Yes. Uh, as I have passed backward and forward through the five stages while contemplating what all of this means for me, my partner, children, grandchildren, and recently arrived first great-grandchildren, I have mostly carried the burden alone without asking others to help shoulder it. Fortunately, resources and support groups such as Collapse Chronicles exist to help people first get their minds around these horrifying possibilities and then turn anxiety and fear about them into courage and resolve to live nobly and well in whatever time we have left. And so what he does in the second half is he interviews uh, four doomers, three of whom uh, I have interviewed. Now one, of course, is a doomer we do not mention on this channel because we like to keep, you, you, you know, the, uh, the relative IQ of this channel, you know, somewhat above clueless moron. So, of course, uh, you cannot do this without interviewing, you know, the biggest clueless moron on the other side of the spectrum, giving, uh, you know, people treating this subject seriously a bad name. We are, of course, talking about the guru of the club that, the, that believes that humans will be extinct in, uh, by 2026. Uh, anybody who believes humans will be extinct by 2026, you are every bit as clueless as anybody who believes that a quadrillion people can live on this planet. I am, I do not mention this idiot's name on this channel. I'm not going to start here. Then he also enters these two, interviews these two fellows that I have also interviewed, Max Wilbert and Michael Dowd. So you can find their comments. So anyway, but he also introduces a fellow I've never heard of named Eric Michaels. Eric Michaels is a researcher of ecological overshoot, its symptoms and the human denial of them. So what I'm going to do, you can read the comments uh, from Max Wilbert and Michael Dowd and the clueless moron uh, that we do not mention on this channel, but we're going to, uh, we're going to read uh, the interview with Eric Michaels. These were just email responses. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a Q&A with Eric Michaels. When will the climate disaster become so intense that nobody will deny it? <clears throat> Eric, those who deny it now will most likely continue denying it. Facts do not change people's beliefs, unfortunately. Thank you, and this is, uh, you know, one of the main things we talk about. People do not want to hear how doomed we are. They don't want to hear it. You can give them all of the facts in the world. They have no interest in facts. Zero interest in facts. Okay, next question. Will civilizational collapse occur? Eric. Civilizational collapse is already happening and deepening. 
It is a very slow process, however, I guess depending on your definition of slow. It is a very slow process, however, and it really affects the most complex societies first. You know, the uh, talking about complexity, we talk of you hear this term, the bigger the come, they come, the harder they fall. Uh, that's what he's talking about here. Civilizational collapse is already happening and deepening. Okay. Will humans survive? Will humans survive the collapse of civilization and the planet? Eric Michaels. A quote from Carl Sagan. Quote, Extinction is the rule. Survival is the exception. Close quote. <coughs> so yes, we will go extinct. The only question is when, not if. I find it hard to believe that humans will still populate the planet by 2100. So, uh, joining a lot of people, I am, I am getting close to this, uh, agreeing with Michael's. I find it hard to believe that humans will still populate the planet by 2100 if there are still groups alive at, the, at that point, the likelihood that they will be functionally extinct is very high. Most likely, six or seven people out of every eight will die over the next two decades as energy and resource decline deepens. So uh, this overshoot researcher Eric Michaels is claiming six or seven people out of every eight will die over the next two decades. So by the year 2040 roughly, the uh, population will be somewhere between one and two billion people, he is claiming. But well before 2050, this man is claiming the, the global population will be between one and two billion. By 2100, the population will be zero. Again, I don't know if I'm ready to go there or not. I don't know that this whole hang up on dates. I don't get it. It's not that big a deal to me. Okay, next question. As conditions deteriorate and social institutions break down, will individuals and groups be able to offer assistance to others? Take it away, Eric Michaels. <clears throat> One will see all ranges of social responses unfolding as time moves forward. People will do good things to help and to provide assistance where they can, and people will also do nasty, selfish, and brutish things as well as everything in between. Fewer people will have the resources and abilities to help others as time moves forward and resiliency is removed from location after location. As collapse deepens and unfolds, fewer people will be able to help as their own conditions deteriorate. There will also be those who decide to be competitive and take whatever they can. So there will be moments of beauty and moments of depravity. Yes. Okay, next question. 
Will American climate refugees from flooded coast or drought plagued areas be welcomed elsewhere? Take it away, Eric Michaels. <clears throat> Many of us suffer greatly from a sense of privilege and what the indigenous Americans call Wetiko, a form of colonialism because everyone alive today grew up with the culture of always having more, very few people will know how to handle a life of constantly having less. He didn't really uh, answer the question, but a good point, but he did not answer the question, will uh, people welcome climate refugees? Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Do some religious millennialists see catastrophic climate change as fulfillment of the prophesied fiery end of the world and even welcome it. Eric Michaels, I have met individuals who talked about these claims. They are troubled by their beliefs and denial of reality. The bottom line, their bottom line, is that the world is not really ending. A new world will unfold and new species will fill ditches once held by species now going extinct. And, and I hear this one a lot, that who cares? You know, 99% of, uh, of species have gone extinct. Who cares if, if humans uh, obliterate uh, themselves and every other species of fellow earthling off the face of this planet? Who cares? They'll, you know, the, the planet will just go on without us, uh, and, 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 and some new clueless moron will come along. Okay, and the final question, of course, between now and the end, what is the best way to live? Eric Michaels, live now which is, I think, his way of saying, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Eric Michaels, live now. That sounds so simple, but can be quite difficult for many people because of our cultural programming and indoctrination. You know, talking about living in the past and planning uh, and worrying about the future. Uh, this is, uh, you know, basically another way of saying get out there and enjoy it while, while you still can. Once you understand uh, that the, the past means nothing anymore. There is no normal anymore. Get rid of the past. It means nothing. History is not getting ready to repeat itself. Uh, we are in a new abnormal. And once you understand that uh, the future is, uh, you know, pick your poison and that uh, any day this uh, whole thing can come down. Uh, this gives you more gratitude to get out there and enjoy every one of these spectacularly gorgeous days while you still can, which is what I'm getting ready to do. So who is this guy? Jim Catano, C-A-T-A-N-O lives and fights for the environment in Salt Lake City. Um, readers looking for support dealing with the emotional impact 
of abrupt climate change can find resources through the Good Grief Network. The Good Grief Network. But I'm going to wrap this up. Let's look at this unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day out here. Would you believe this? It is heading to 78 degrees today on this spectacularly gorgeous November day and the collapse of global industrial civilization. This is, uh, here I am. We're about halfway from New York to Florida, baby. Out here on this fine fall day with my normie friends out here at the lake. We should go catch some catfish while we're here. And I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy this gorgeous day on the planet while you still can. Bye, guys.